Now here's an airplane just about to come into ground effect. Now the thing you need to know about ground effect is an airplane actually flies better within about a wingspan of the ground. And that can cause it to float and float and float and float and float. And that is one of the problems with ground effect. Now why does an airplane fly better when it's within about a wingspan of the ground? Well, here's why. Normally, when an airplane is flying, we talked about the fact that there's high pressure underneath the wing and relative low pressure on top of the wing. And we also said that any time you have this pressure differential, some of the molecules from the high pressure area are going to try and make their way around the wingtip and destroy lift on top of the wings. Well, any time an airplane is flying, some of the lift on top of the wing is actually being destroyed in that fashion. But when an airplane gets within about a wingspan of the ground, the ground interferes with the ability of the air to make its way around the wingtip. And some of the lift that would have been destroyed is no longer being destroyed when the airplane's within about a wingspan of the ground, and that is called ground effect. So on the FA written exam, you need to know that ground effect is the result of the interference of the surface of the Earth with the airflow patterns about an airplane. And an airplane actually flies more efficiently in ground effect. Now, two big problems in ground effect. First of all, if you're taking off in ground effect, Ground effect may result in your becoming airborne before reaching recommended takeoff speed. Now, the airplane will fly, but it may have a hard time climbing out of ground effect. And therefore, if you take off too soon, you can actually wind up using a lot more runway to get airborne. So ground effect may result in becoming airborne before reaching recommended takeoff speed. And this is really a problem at high altitude airports. They had a guy who took off one time at Lake Tahoe. It has about oh, 5,000 foot altitude. Sometimes it gets up to 90, maybe 100 degrees at Lake Tahoe. Tremendous density altitudes at Lake Tahoe. Well, this guy took off at Lake Tahoe and his pilot technique for taking off had always been to look outside the window see if the runway was going by fast enough. And he'd say, oh, that looks fast enough for me. And he'd jerk back on the wheel and pull the airplane off. Now, the problem is the airplane could fly in ground effect, but there's no way in the world the guy could make the airplane climb that way. So what happens to him is he flies the whole length of the runway, about five feet above the ground, and hits a tree at the other end. That guy staggered out of that airplane and said, ground effect caused that accident. Well, in a sense, he's right, but it's not ground effect that causes that accident. It's ground effect doesn't cause accident. What causes accidents in airplanes? Pilots cause accidents, and the pilot caused that accident by allowing the airborne, airplane to become airborne before reaching recommended takeoff speed. Now, let's talk about it. Would you say ground effect increases or decreases lift? Well, to increase lift, the airplane flies better in ground effect. And does ground effect increase or decrease drag? It decreases drag. And so, therefore, if you have any excess speed on landing, you're going to have considerable floating. So could ground effect cause floating? Sure it could, because the induced drag decreases. Therefore, any excess speed at the point of flare may cause considerable floating. So ground effect causes floating on landing, and floating due to ground effect will be most realized during an approach to land when you're less than how much above the ground? Less than one wingspan above the surface. So ground effect can cause you to become airborne too soon, and you're going to have floating on landing when the aircraft is less than the one wingspan above the surface.